Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week's episode is a brand I've been collecting for about three years and I sort of fell into by accident. It's historic dive watch brand Doxa. And I fully recognise that for all sorts of reasons you may never have heard of it. And even if you have, there may be reasons why you haven't got one. This week I'm going to take you through the full Doxa range. It's history, unboxing, what makes them interesting, what makes them notorious, and also a full look at my Doxa collection. So an awful lot to get through. Okay ramblers, let's get rambling. Welcome to Doxa, a brand formed in 1889 in Switzerland and named after the Greek word for glory. Since the 1960s, Doxa was known for its high quality professional dive watches, developed in conjunction with diving legend Jacques Cousteau. This bloke. Before we start, there are three things you need to know about Doxa. Number one, they're all waterproof professional grade dive watches. Number two, Orange is the signature colour, but Doxa is known for its bright colours. And number three, that distinctive beads of rice bracelet. And a quick word on that beads of rice bracelet, named not surprisingly because it looks like a series of strands of steel rice. It's exceptionally comfortable, features easy adjustment, and it works well for its intended purpose, which is underwater. Before we get too far into this episode though, it's time for the quick wristwatch check and under the blue jumper this week I have my Jaja Le Coultre Tribute to the Deep Sea Alarm. This is reference Q2028470. It's a dive watch from La Grande Maison itself and it's a 2016 reissue of a classic dive watch with a buzzing alarm that you can feel through the arm of your wetsuit. It's a limited edition of 359 pieces, this is number 206, and this is the American issue of the watch, which has a more interesting deep sea alarm script on the dial. It's self-winding, a 40.5mm case, weighs just 83 grams, and it comes with the calibre 956 movement. I first saw the original of this watch in the Man and His Watch book, and I fell instantly in love with it, I had to have one. The originals are almost impossible to get hold of, but fortunately JLC sought to give us this modern interpretation, so I snapped it up. But having got the wristwatch check out of the way, I thought now the first thing we should do is go through the current Doxa range. Now I will admit that the world of Doxa can be a confusing place, and a quick review of the current range on its website reveals exactly why. The choice is bewildering. The collection seems nonsensical. Sub 200, 300T, sub 300 carbon, 600T, Pacific, 1500T, T-graph, C-graph. It's just too much. But when you actually get a Doxa in your hands and you enjoy those bright dials and the chunky feel and the beads of rice bracelet, you get it. You want one. But trying to get into Doxa is not that pleasurable an experience. There are no obvious stars in the collection, no halo models, and this is a bit of a problem. Now I know some of you might go, but Damien, Rolex, Omegas, they've all got way too many similar models. And yes, they do, but there is a big difference. Yes, there are lots of distinct models and sub-brands within those ranges, but it is pretty clear what and who they are all for. When it comes to Doxa though, everything seems pretty much the same. So before we look in detail at my collection, let's have a quick recap of what you can currently buy. The first thing you'll notice is that there are 11 models in the range and within those, you've got a further six color schemes, making 66 choices in total. Each color choice has a cool name attached to it. So orange is the professional, shark hunter is black, sea rambler, the worst name is white, Caribbean is dark blue, Diving Star is yellow, and Aquamarine is uh, turquoise. And there are two types of bracelets for all of those, rubber or steel. So that's 132 variations right off the bat. No wonder people get confused and walk away. This is the Sub 200. It's the baby of the Doxa range. It comes in six colors, a rubber strap in two sizes, or an adjustable steel beads of rice bracelet. It's a simple three-hand format, Hard as nails 316L stainless steel, 42mm case. 
It's got a date window, it's waterproof to 200 meters, 38 hour power reserve, sapphire crystal, unidirectional bezel, and that's pretty much it. It's the most simple watch that Doxa produces, and I have to say, I'm pretty taken with the white pearl. Then there's this Sub 200 Seagraph, a self-winding chronometer, slightly larger at 45 millimeters, water resistant to 200 meters, a 48 hour power reserve, and as you can see, the dial is a lot more cluttered to cope with the chronometer's subdials. The Sub 200 T-Graph is the one that I would have though, and it's one of the best Doxa that you can buy. We'll talk about it in a little bit more in a minute, but it's got a vastly improved movement and it's limited to 300 pieces, which strangely don't seem to have sold out yet since it was launched in 2019. The Sub 300T is a tribute to the 1968 Conquistador and as such has a helium escape valve and it's waterproof to 1200 meters and 120 bar. It's got a 42.5 millimeter case, 38 hour power reserve, and like the T-Graph, it has a compression dive time calculator on the bezel. And this is the basic Sub 300. Are you getting bored yet? Are you sure? You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me! The 300 has a 42.5 millimeter case, domed sapphire crystal, 38 hour power reserve, it's water resistant to 300 meters, unidirectional bezel, yada yada yada. Here's something a bit different though. This is the Sub 300 Carbon Aqualung US Divers watch. It's a 42 millimeter self-winding watch using that trusty ETA 2824-2 movement, 38 hour power reserve, Aqualung logo on the dial, it's rated to 300 meters, and it's got a forged carbon case, and it's limited to 300 pieces. And actually, this one is pretty cool. Somewhat immediately ruining the specialness of the carbon Aqualung though, is the Sub 300 Carbon, which is basically the same watch, but in lots of different colors. The Sub 300 Carbon is exactly the same specification as the Special Edition, but without the logo on the dial. Talk about shooting your Special Edition in the head before it's even had a chance to start walking. Next up is the Sub 600T, which initially was a Titanium Special Edition, but wouldn't you know it, now you can get it as a steel watch with lots of different colours. It's a 40mm self-winding watch with an unspecified movement, and it's rated to a depth of 600 metres. This, along with the Carbon Special Edition, is probably my favourite current Doxa, the Sub 600T Pacific. It's got a titanium case, blue dial, blue rubber strap, orange minute hand, and it's limited to 200 pieces. The movement, again, is unspecified. Just two more Doxa to go, and this is the Sub 1500T, rated to 1500 metres and with a 42 hour power reserve. And that's about it. And finally, we have the big daddy, the Sub 4000T, which sounds like an all new Terminator. It's distinguished by having a 47.5 millimeter case, helium escape valve, and a prominent power reserve meter on the dial. And it's rated to a depth of not 4,000 meters, but 12, 1,200, 1,200 meters. So actually less than the 1500 T. The big daddy, less than the 50, it just, it just doesn't make sense. That's the current range, and yes, I agree, it's a lot. Way too much, in my opinion. Here's my Doxa collection, and as you can see, I have ticked the vibrant color box option. This is the Sub 200 T-Graph. It's a reissue of the original 1967 T-Graph, powered by the Vaju 7734 movement. It's limited edition of 300, mine is number 53, and amazingly, some are still available. I think it's got the best dial combination of all the Doxas, and if you only have one Doxa, this is the one to have. You do pay for that movement though, as this one is considerably more expensive than the others. This little number here is the Sub 1200T Project Aware, and this is a partnership between Doxa and Paddy, who runs the non-profit organization Project Aware, which focuses the diving community to protect the ocean, in particular shark conservation and marine litter. This one is probably my second favorite Doxa. It's a vivid yellow Sub 300T Diving Star Poseidon Edition. 
This is a tribute to the rare yellow dial 300Ts of the 70s. Poseidon is a Swedish diving gear company, and so therefore their logo is emblazoned on the dial. It's a 43mm tonneau-shaped case. They made 500 pieces, mine is 93, in 2018. It's got the ETA 2824-2 movement, 1200 meters water resistance, and I really love it. The last Doxer in my collection, as you can see, I've got four, is this. This is the 130th anniversary Shark Hunter. It's a 42 millimeter watch. They made 130 of them. It's got the ETA 2824-2 movement in it again, 42 hour power reserve, and quite the most unfinished, sharp engraved case back that you will ever find. It is, to use common parlance, rough as assholes. I have to confess that this watch really doesn't feel that special at all. It's just a black dial Shark Hunter base model sub 200 with an engraving. It's got an orange seconds hand and a 130 in orange on the dial, but unlike the sub 200 T graph, you get no upgraded movement. Yes, there are only 130 of these in existence. Mine is number 81, and that does make it a pretty good limited edition, but the watch doesn't feel anywhere near special enough to celebrate 130 years of Doxa. Now you've seen my Doxa collection, it's time to take you back through the history of Doxa so that you can understand why I found this brand and these watches so interesting. Doxa was formed by Georges Ducamont in 1889. At 28 Rue de Bilod in Le Loco in the Jura Mountains of Switzerland, and just a few kilometers from La Chaux de Fonds, a popular location for watch brands. In 1905, the Doxa pocket watch was honored at the World's Fair in Belgium, here it is. And in 1908, the patent was filed for the eight-day Doxa movement, an innovation which secured Doxa's reputation in the watchmaking industry. Doxa quickly became known for quality dress watches, pocket watches, and dashboard clocks. Doxa was also highly prized because it allowed customers to customize its watches, a fact which becomes especially pertinent when you consider who currently owns the brand. Georges sadly passed away in 1936, but his son-in-law, Jacques Nardin, grandson, yes, of Ulysses Nardin, took over. And as it turned out, the business was in good hands. 1967 was the biggest turning point for Doxa, because that saw the launch of the Sub 300, a dive watch that stood out because of its robust construction, tonneau-shaped case, unidirectional rotating bezel, spring-loaded diver's extension on the bracelet, and its bright orange dial, which extensive testing was more legible underwater than any other color. In your face, Rolex. The watch was also quickly adopted by proper divers because it featured the US Navy's no decompression dive chart on the bezel. And one of the most famous divers who embraced the brand early on and actually became the American distributor was none other than Jacques Cousteau, who put his Aqualung logo on the dials. In 1968, Doxa launched the Conquistador, which had a helium escape valve, and this was believed to be the first time that such a device had been available to the public, a full two years ahead of the Rolex Seedweller. Unfortunately for Doxa, the 70s were not kind, and because of the quartz crisis and Doxa's resistance to move in that area, it finally saw Doxa go bankrupt in 1980. In 1997, though, the brand was bought by the Jenny family in the form of the Walker Company, and it's currently headed up by CEO Jan Idox. Since then, the iconic Sub 300 brand has been relaunched and reinvented all around the world, with a focus on online sales and also bringing younger owners to the Doxa brand. In 2017, Doxa released a 30-piece limited edition 50th anniversary tribute to the original Sub 300, and in 2019, two special editions were launched, the 130th anniversary Shark Hunter that I have in my collection, and this magnificent and expensive solid gold 200 T graph, limited to just 13 units, surely the ultimate unrepeatable Doxa. So why is Doxa so interesting and why did I start to get into them? Well, if you look at my Doxa collection, the thing that defines it is that they are all limited editions or special models, 
coupled with bright colours. I have to admit I was a bit sucked into the history of the brand and the fact that few people knew what they were. It feels a bit like some insider knowledge. I really appreciate how well built they feel. They are weighty and tall on the wrist. They feel a bit retro, a bit Warlords of Atlantis, a bit Jules Verne. The bezels are huge and sit proud of the case so that you can operate them with diving gloves. They click precisely and with damping and solidity. The hands are quirky and different lengths. The chunky bracelet clasps complete the 1960s feel, along with the clever use of subdials that look like radiation gauges in the case of the Sub 200. The Poseidon and Project Aware logos enhance the coloured dials to make them seem even more like cool tool watches. One thing that does annoy me a bit though about Doxa watches is their casual reference to depths. Some of the watches, the number refers to the depth, lots of them, it doesn't. And when you've got this many watches and a numerical naming convention, that's actually pretty annoying. And now it's time to go into Unboxovision. So let's have a look at the packaging of this Doxa. As you can see, it comes in a square cardboard box, this one. Some of the others come in metal tubes, but this 200 t graph comes in a cardboard box. Inside, from Dura watches, you've got some instructions, a bit of paper. This is the registration card. You've got this pretty cool zipped up diver's pouch that the watch actually comes in. And there's the watch inside, tucked in quite nicely. How and where did I buy my Doxa collection? Well, the buying story for these ones is fairly simple and it's rooted in the fact that Doxa were primarily offering their watches online until relatively recently. Now you can get Doxa in Goldsmiths, Wallace Allen, Beaverbrooks, James Porter and CW Sellers. But without access to those retailers when I was looking for mine, I bought them from Dura Watches, which is the online retail arm of CW Sellers. I bought two of them from there, and then I bought the Poseidon and the Project Aware from Chrono24, because they were a lot harder to get hold of, and obviously older, discontinued models. Overall then, I'm quite happy with the Doxa that I've got, but in making this episode, I found out something a little bit worrying. Because Doxa's parent company is Walka, a long-running custom watch operation, with manufacturing primarily in BN Switzerland, <laughs> and China. And it is a company that allegedly makes full use of the guidelines around how to use Swiss made on your dial. The rule says that 60% of the production cost must originate in Switzerland and that the movement must be assembled, encased and inspected in Switzerland. There are many in the watch community who believe that Doxa are actually manufacturing in China and merely assembling in BN. This, they believe, has diluted the appeal of Doxa, and they believe that the modern versions do not live up to the heritage of the earlier dive watches. Now, I have to confess, I had no idea of this when I started getting into Doxa. It didn't really ever occur to me. Could it really be true that Doxa is just a front for Chinese-made watches? A veil of authenticity trading on Georges de Commons' respected name? Given that I was a customer and also a fan, I was determined to find out the truth firsthand. Here is the somewhat worrying reply that I received. What you need to know is that Doxa is not a watch manufacturer and has never been communicated as such. The components of Doxa's watches are not manufactured in-house. A network of the best Swiss suppliers around Doxa and also foreign suppliers each selected for their specific know-how, the quality of their components, and their reliability, supply Doxa. A fact is that each Doxa watch exceeds the minimum values of Swiss made. The quality of Doxa watches remains the number one value for the Jenny family. So, Doxa is not a watch manufacturer? As you can see, direct from Doxa, the components are sourced from many different suppliers, presumably including China and then assembled in Switzerland in order to fulfill the Swiss-made criteria. So okay, I guess that means it is just a brand being exploited for its historic value, and that is a bit of a shame. It doesn't detract from the attractiveness of the current Doxa offering. There are some beautiful watches in there, and as I say, the Sub 200 t is my pick. 
Does it hurt my appreciation of the pieces that I've got? Not to a great degree, because I have Chinese-made watches from Undone in my collection, but I always view them as more disposable and fun pieces, not important parts of the collection. Doxa was in the Watch Guys collection precisely because of the brand's history and credibility and quality. And now I find that some of those things are a bit questionable. Does this mean I'm more likely to not consider Doxa for the collection going forward? I think it does mean that. I think this may well have tainted it a little bit for me. Undoubtedly, the modern watches are well built and they seem pretty good quality and relatively accurate. But without that sort of direct tie in back to the dive watch manufacturing heritage origins, it has lost a little bit for me, I have to admit. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments whether you think it makes any difference whatsoever. Thank you for watching this episode on my Doxa collection, its history and also where it's going right now and its current range. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it useful and entertaining. If you like what I'm doing on the watch guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.